Hi guys, this is Naresh. Welcome to Ascani IT. After watching this video, you will get a clear idea about dependency injection and how .NET 5 supports dependency injection. Coming to agenda, I will explain what is dependency injection and we will see a demo without dependency injection and we will resolve the same problem with the dependency injection with the .NET 5. And also we check about various injection techniques and we will see what is service lifetime, how we use it in a dependency injection. I hope you are excited. Before that, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do it immediately so that it gives a boost to me to do a lot of videos like this. Let's get started. What is dependency? Dependency or dependent means relying on something for support. Like if I say class A uses some functionality of class B, then it said that class A has a dependency of class B. So here, uh, if a class A wants to consume some methods of class B, then definitely class A needs object of class B. This is called dependent. Now here, class A is dependent on class B. Now, transferring the task of creating the object to someone else and directly using the dependency is called dependency injection. Now with this example, the dependency injection will create object for class B and it will, and it will inject that object into a class A. This is called dependency injection. If I summarize this, dependency injection is a technique where one object supplies the dependencies of another object. So all the dependencies get injected into requested class. Uh, this is the idea behind the dependency injection. If we look into the responsibilities of dependency injection, it is responsible for creating the objects and to know which classes requires those objects and provide them all those objects. And what is the benefits of using this dependency injection? If we use this dependency injection, it's the code makes more reusable and testable and readable and it reduces dependency carrying. Now take a look at this below example. Here we have a, one interface and one class. I calculator is interface and the calculator is a class. Under this, uh, we have uh, one method calculate interest rate. So based on certain inputs, it calculates interest and it returns the output as integer. And here we have home controller. Under this one action method is there, get calculated interest. So this method internally calling calculator class method. That is, we created an object calculator and with that object we are calling calculate interest method. So if you observe here, the home controller is dependent on calculator class. So every time this needs to create object for this calculator class. This is called dependency. In this example, we have few drawbacks. The controller is dependent on class. So according to solid principles and the classes should not depend on actual implementation. The classes should depend on abstraction. If we want to use different implementation in place of calculator class, again, we need to change the home controller. And if the calculator class depends on other classes, we must configure them again inside of uh, home control. So it becomes difficult to handle for large applications. That's why we use dependency injection technique here. We have few third party libraries which supports dependency injection. Unity, Ninject, Artifact, Spring.net, 
or free of IOC containers which are responsible for managing dependency injection. In .NET 5, ASP.NET Core Framework includes built-in IOC container for automatic dependency injection. We don't require to use any third-party libraries to support dependency injection here. ASP.NET Core injects objects of dependency classes through constructor or method by using built-in IOC container. In order to let the container automatically inject classes, we need to register them as a services in a startup class. Hi. In our previous slides, we have seen one problem without any dependency injection that is in a calculator class. Now I will show you the same problem and uh, fix that same problem with a dependency injection with the help of .NET 5. Let me create a new project. And then just select a web API, is .NET Core web API. And I'll giving some name sample app I'm selecting framework dot net five even dot net three or two dot two also have this dependency injection support now I'm just selecting dot net five framework and I'm choosing configure for HTTP it's fine. Yeah, now we got one sample app with uh, some default files that is application settings and startup file and the program file and with the default controller also with some weather forecast controller. and uh, for now we will go we will create a new controller that is a API controller and I am giving a name as Home. Now you will see an empty controller. Uh, now we will produce the, our problem or demo issue that is calculator class. This is our demo problem, and uh, we have one method also for that. Yeah, let me reproduce our demo problem. Yeah, this is what uh, we have earlier. We have interface i calculator, and uh, we have an implementation for that interface. That is, calculate this method is returns calculated value. Now, when I'm coming to this action method, when we call this method, this is internally creating an object for this class and it's calling the method. So, uh, the home controller is dependent on calculator class. So, in future, if you want to give different implementation in place of calculator class, uh, so you, again you need to come here and you need to change values instead of this home controller so it's a drawback for huge applications when you have a different types of implementations currently we are just relying on only one class that's fine but when coming to large application it's very huge to maintain and modify every controller so before doing any changes in this implementation we will just see the output I'm just running the application.
yeah this is a swagger ui by default comes in our application just the c api get method now we got the result this is our controller home controller this is a weather forecast controller. so in the home controller we have a get method which is uh, we have implemented now if you have an option here execute when you click on this execute this api get calls and uh, we will see the response here so it's working but uh, this is not the right way get our code now we will see the dependency injection how it helps us with the .NET 5 so as i said earlier the objects of dependent class comes via constructor or method variables so now i'm creating an, a constructor for this controller home controller and uh, dependent class comes as an object via constructor here so just to catch that constructor uh, object i'm just creating one variable here So I'm just assigning that object to this variable. Then I call this method directly with this object. Character one. Yeah, calculate interpret. Still we need to do one more setting, but let me run this application. Anyway, we'll get an error, but uh, let's see that error also. Yeah, this is a home controller. I'm just clicking and write out. Good. Yeah, we got an error. That is, it's unable to resolve the service type. I calculated so this is what uh, we will get an error if we didn't resist as we didn't register with the dependence dependence injection container so just we need to register that in our startup class so let me open the startup class and we have a service collection here so here we need to register our uh, classes an interface we have a couple of ways to register uh, one is add transient and if you see here we have a two types of parameters one is service type and another one is the implementation type so the service type is type i calculator And implementation for that service type is calculator. So here we registered these classes with the built-in IOC container. The .NET framework container takes care of creating objects for these classes. So and uh, this will serve the object of these classes via constructor of, of requested so this is serves the object here and we are here we are catching this object and uh, we are using in the action method so now we will see the output Try it out. Thanks, you. Yeah, now we got an output. 
you observe here, uh, still uh, we haven't created any object. Uh, the kind of framework, the .NET Core or .NET 5 itself is supporting this object creation and uh, passing requested classes. This is what uh, dependency injection .NET 5 and uh, few more to points here uh, here we have a couple of options to register classes and uh, in coming slides i will show the what is the differences between them and uh, what is the uh, usage with those lifetimes the other lifetimes for the services uh, let me show you one more thing add services dot add scope is also one of the uh, technique to register our services service type and implementation and we will see a few more things also in coming slides in part two we will see uh, various dependency injection techniques and what is service lifetime and its types and the drawbacks of dependency injection and if you have any questions or comments please update in my youtube group the youtube comments so we'll cover that also in the part two session i hope this video helped you please share this to your colleague or friend please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel catch you on next video thank you